Hi, Leora Alderson here with Gardenzaw.com and we are um, transplanting some baby tree collards that were basically cut and um, taken from the stems of a larger tree collard and then planted in this soil, potting soil, cactus soil medium. And now we're gonna transplant these babies into a little bit of a larger pot. And there are some that are really, really tiny, so we're gonna leave those alone and hope for the best. But we're gonna see what the roots look like of this, because these were just shaved off from this rough stem, as you can see from here, from the node of the rough uh, stem of the tree collar, which is uh, Brassica oleraceae is the botanical name. Okay, you can see underneath, let's see if we can lift it. I don't know how much the root system has set, but they have definitely grown to more than twice the amount. You can see the little root system in there, and you can see where the um, slice from the stem of the node. So I'm gonna just get a little bit more soil so we don't rip the, oh, and the roots have gone over here. So it's migrating. So Coleman, uh, who is behind the camera right now, said it was time to transplant them and I have been protecting these babies saying that they're not ready to leave mama. But he's right because instead of growing down, they're growing um, horizontally, which means they probably, wow, look at that root system. They'll probably do much better um, in the larger pot. I'm not even sure actually if this is going to do it. Um, so, because we, we might want to, they might want to be reaching down. Oops, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to make it as Just deep for them as we can. Spiral it in there. Okay. Yeah. Spiral in is a good idea. Okay. Uh. So, they'll be happy and thriving in here for a little while, but. We're, one of the reasons we're not going into a larger pot, I guess, right now, we would have maybe if we had known, if I had known they were deeper, I might have thought that would have been a good idea. I'm not sure. Um, but what do you think? Do you think that they should? Because the, well, the reason is we're going to go to the ground. They're going to go in the ground. But. Well, yeah, the, we, the, this will help them build up within a restricted area, a root system. And I think in the tray there, they just, as you saw, they're just kind of sprawling out in every direction. Yeah. So we'll maybe pick the largest ones and plant in this, this medium here and um, just do it that way. Yeah. These, these are, by the way, a special kind of tree collard from um, folks up in Michigan. Alicos Crops provide these to us. We actually bought them, but they provided saying that these particular tree collards were hardy, even up there in Michigan. So in a way, we're preserving what they started by way of having so many of these, um, these little cuttings, if you will, getting propagated into this hardy tree collard species. Wow, so look how it's gone kinda, all the way over here. Yeah, the my roots gosh. traveled. It's extensive. Yeah. yeah. So this will be our, our project for the morning time. And, and also when you talk about these stems here. Yeah, so, and yeah. even the stems that the, um, the cuttings were taken from, we just thought, well, what the heck, why don't we just plant the stems and see what happens? And surely enough, we have these little leaves coming out on the stems and um, see a little bit of action right in here, right? and then it looks like it's shooting up stems from the bottom down in here so uh, we may have something going here where we can propagate these and carry them on through and this time uh, we won't be so eager to cut them before the season is over and see how they do over the winter time so how would we wrap this one up and there's a story behind that that we're not going to go into right now we're not going to talk about who cut them prematurely no 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 no. <laughs> or by accident we're not going there. but look what we've ended up with <laughs> right look at all the babies we got from that whatever <laughs> all right okay. signing off they are alderson for godensall.com i hope you will subscribe and like it if you like it let us know your experience of if you've been growing tree collars or anything like it or if you have any questions right okay now we're transplanting a uh, newly or, or a newly growing tree collard stem and you can see all the baby tree collards um, happy to be stemming out from the nodes um, this one's doing really well not sure how, how the roots are gonna look let's see and I know it's not going to a much bigger pot 
No roots yet. There it is. So they are at the bottom. Um, it's not going to a much bigger pot, but these will eventually be transplanted into the ground. So that's why we're not going that much bigger right now. These guys just want to grow. All right. So we'll water all these in that we've transplanted and set them in a nice location. Yeah. A warm location, but not freezing for sure, but definitely watch them grow and uh, we'll fill you in on what happened later on down the road. Yes, Coleman and Leora Alderson for GardensAll.com. Hope you liked it and found it helpful. Let us know your tips on growing tree collards or whether you tried them or would like to. Bye. So this is, this is a quick look and what I wanted to tell you all about, we have two varieties. One is called the green tree collard. And some say they're not quite as flavorful. The particular variety we have is from the Oikos tree crops guy up there. And his name is, that's his, right? Ken Asmus. Last year, we purchased three plants from Ken Two did not make it because of vole activity under the ground. One did, and from that one, we extracted the, the propagation material for making this. You can see it's a green, right? And we also have a cutting. Now, the first one was a stem, and you can see the same age and everything, so it looks like the stem, the stem Stem, just cutting the stem, trimming off the leaves, and uh, you could even this would be like in late fall, early winter. You can take that those stem sections, put them in a baggie, put them in the crisper section of your refrigerator, and you can leave them there until they're ready to come out. And you set them in a pot of nice, well-drained, uh, medium pot, and they take to root just like this one. Now, this is a cutting that came off a stem, and it's been a little more challenging. And as you can see, in contrast, again, these are the same age. Um, the cuttings don't do quite as well, but we'll be planting both this year. So um, these are what, what are referred to as the Michigan green collards. They were developed by Ken Asmus over a period of, of years where he was looking for a hardy tree collard. Most tree collards don't make it below, say, 20 degrees. That's really pushing it. So they're marginal here in our zone 7A. And Ken up in Michigan developed some varieties like this one that he observed actually held up quite well during severe Michigan winters. We're talking like zone five, right? Really cold weather and they were sitting in a coal frame or in some instances just sitting outside. We have a photo too of, um, of this particular plant, not this exact one, but th uh, this tree collard sitting out in the snow and the temperature that weekend was around 15 degrees. So that really shows that this is a great product. There we go. Can't see a lot to it. We do have these other varieties here but um, just a lovely plant, and it has the purple leaves. The top leaves are green. They tend to have a, a purple vein running through them. And um, by some accounts, these actually taste better. But these two will be a perennial. They're just more delicate than the green collards like this one here. Okay. So you may wonder whatever became of that stem cutting green tree collard that we showed you all in the very beginning. It was just beginning to leaf out really nicely, really, really sh vigorous. And we grew it on a little bit more and we decided to plant it in the bed where its former <laughs> mates had lived, but were affected by the voles. So here it is. It's got a cage made of hardware cloth that goes down about 16 inches. It has a bottom to it and it's a little bit above grade here. So we'll see how this works out. I think it's a much better position than its former mates were last year. So we're just going to be happy to grow it on and keep you all posted as to how it's going.
that's right here next to an arbor that we're going to we're going to tie it off to and we're looking forward to it by the way its mate is over here the one that survived the winter the one that was in the picture that got cut back and cut into segments well here it is it's back so um, we're off to a great adventure here it is spring in zone 7a north carolina coleman alderson signing off for now so long